Hello guys, it's Leroy again. I'm sure you're enjoying these lectures as much as I am. Today, we will be talking about another modality in medical imaging and that is ultrasound. We will talk about the history, the equipment used, the principles applied in diagnoses and also have a view of a few ultrasound images. With the history of ultrasound, the first time ultrasound was used for clinical reasons was in 1956. It was used in Glasgow by an obstetrician named Ian Donald and an engineer named Tom Brown. These two men developed the first prototype system for ultrasound, but it wasn't perfected until the end of the 1950s. However, the actual technology dates back to the late 1700s and it went through plenty of discoveries and changes over the years. Some of these scientists include Lazarus Polanzani, Jacques, and Pierre Curry, Paul Langevin, C. Helmuth Hertz and many others. What is ultrasound imaging? Ultrasound imaging uses sound waves to create images of the body. It is commonly used to visualize fetuses in the womb during pregnancy. This is called obstetric ultrasound. Sound is produced by the vibration of molecules in a medium such as air or water. Sound travels through different media as waves of pressure and is characterized by its frequency, which is measured in units called hertz. Sound that falls between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz are sounds that we can hear and are called audible sound. The term ultrasound is used to describe sound waves with frequencies above 20 kilohertz which is beyond human hearing. How do ultrasound machines work? An ultrasound machine, consists of a probe connected to a scanner unit that provides controls and displays images. Inside the ultrasound probe, there are quartz crystals called the piezoelectric crystals. When an electric current is applied to these crystals, they change shape rapidly. It's these rapid shape changes or vibrations, which produces ultrasound waves. The probe sends these ultrasound waves into the patient's body. At each boundary between different tissues or organs, some of the sound waves are reflected back to the probe, which records the positions and strength of these echoes. The scanner unit combines this information carried as echoes to the probe, to create an image of the boundaries of the different tissues and organs from which the sound waves have been reflected from. The ultrasound machine, calculates the depth of each boundary, by measuring the time taken for each reflected wave to return. The deeper the tissue or organ depth, the longer time it takes for the echo slash reflected wave to return. Fluids such as blood, urine or the amniotic fluid inside the womb of a woman do not reflect sounds and hence appear as black in the image. Fluids serve as an acoustic window, that is, it allows other tissues in its environment, to be clearly displayed. An example is the amniotic fluid allowing for better visualization of the fetus in the womb of a woman. The probe. Ultrasound probes come in different shapes and sizes depending on their use. The appropriate probe should be selected to explore specific areas of diagnostic interest. Different probes also produce different frequencies of ultrasound. Probes using a very high amount of frequencies, produce very accurate and detailed images but are limited by their tissue penetration ability, thus they are disadvantaged to deep tissues diagnosis in the body. While lower frequency probes, allow for deeper penetration at the cost of a low resolution image. The shape of the image displayed on the ultrasound machine depends on the arrangement of the piezoelectric crystal within the probe. For example, a probe with a flat face or footprint has a linear or rectangular image. The curvilinear transabdominal probe produces fan-shaped or sector images. The footprint from the transvaginal probe is also fan-shaped, but typically has a wider sector angle than the curvilinear probe. The piezoelectric crystals within the probe are very fragile hence must be handled with care and stored correctly when not in use. The probe is the most delicate and expensive part of the machine. The cable connecting the probe to the imaging is also very vulnerable to damage if not well looked after. The Doppler effect. Ultrasound machines are able to record the movement of fluid within the body by making use of something called the Doppler effect. The frequency of a sound wave changes depending on whether something is moving away or towards its source. 
This is known as the Doppler effect, and this is why the sound of an ambulance appears to be getting higher as it approaches you and lower as it moves away from you. Ultrasound machines are able to measure this shift in frequency to measure movement within the body. An example is the measure of the speed and direction of blood flow within an artery. This is most commonly shown with colors red and blue which represent movement close and away from the probe respectively. Safety. Although ultrasound imaging is a safe and effective imaging technique, it can cause harm if carried out incorrectly. Vibrations created by sound waves, cause heat to build up in human tissue. The amount of heat produced is calculated by the ultrasound machine and it's called the thermal index, TI. A small amount of rising in temperature is acceptable but it's advisable to keep the thermal index below 1 at all times. Doppler sonography uses a pulse signal which creates high amounts of heat and has the highest TI for this reason, Doppler should not be used in the first 12 weeks of pregnancy unless clinically indicated. A Doppler ultrasound is a non-invasive test that can be used to estimate the blood flow through your blood vessels by bouncing high-frequency sound waves or ultrasound off circulating red blood cells. A regular ultrasound uses sound waves to produce images, but can't show blood flow. In general, the higher the strength of the ultrasound signal, the higher the risk of causing damage to tissue. For this reason, the strength of the signal should always be as low as reasonably achievable, Alara, the golden rule of radiography. And that's it for today. Please do interact with us via any of our social media platforms which are shown on the board and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, bye.